it's time. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tony. Today we have something rather special, at least for me, because I have my very own hand-built Princeton Reverb amplifier here sitting right beside me, ready to go. Now, I don't know if you guys have been following the build on my channel, but I've been putting blood, sweat and tears to get this thing built. And it's been rather a long process for me because I've been doing it on and off. I have documented the entire thing for you guys. So if you guys are interested in checking out exactly what went into building this amplifier, you can check out the videos. Princeton reverbs are pretty famous for their clean sounds, for their lush reverbs, and that's what we're gonna be playing today. So the volume is on four and a half as a reference, the treble four and a half, the bass about three, just over three. Reverb is about three. The speed and intensity we won't talk about right now because we'll kick that in a, in a little bit. Uh, we'll just focus on the clean sounds with the reverb right now. And I'm playing the Strat with the uh, neck and middle position. So let's strum a couple of chords. First, I want to point out something. The amp is on. It's dead quiet. I think this is one of the reasons why hand-built amplifiers point to point are so satisfying because they're really clean. This is a uh, road-worn Strat, beautiful place to start, a match made in heaven in my opinion, a Strat and a Princeton go together like peanut butter and jelly if you ask me. So let's play some sounds, strum some chords, let you hear what this sounds like. <laughs> So the amp with the reverb on three is very doable. Uh, this, it's not unmanageable by any means, the reverb. Uh, let's pu punch it up a little bit more. Let's put it on about six. Now, when you dime up the reverb, it does get a little bit more noisy because it is using tubes to drive the reverb, but here we go. <laughs> Definitely more reverb on top with that. I don't know anyone who would want to play with that much reverb, but for giggles, let's put it on 10. I mean, we could be here all day waiting for that reverb to die out, uh, but I'm going to put it back to three, about there. Let's listen to the tremolo. Tremolo is always a fun thing. Is it tremolo or vibrato? I'm going to call it vibrato. For giggles, we have it on about four here. Uh, the speed is on four, the intensity is about five, just as a reference. <laughs> Nice sounding. Let's bring up the intensity a bit here. See what happens if we dial it, that up a little bit more. Bring this speed down a little bit. You can
can get some really nice chorusy effects if you don't use the intensity all the way up. Um, so let's bring that to about four. I think that's pretty sweet sounding and let's hear what it sounds like when it's pushed a little bit harder. Let's put it on the neck position. Once again, reverb is really nice, sounds nice and full, nice and lush. What happens if we kick in a little drive from a pedal? Let's throw in um, something that may give it a little bit more of a classic crunch. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Fantastic job with both a Strat and a Les Paul style guitar. If you have the right pedal pushing it, you can keep it from getting flabby. Now, the stock speaker in this amplifier is nothing to write home about. It's a run-of-the-mill 10-inch speaker. It's not a 12-inch, but it does have plenty of bass on tap. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to experiment with other types of speakers to try and make this amplifier even better than it is already, but there might be some better choices out there. So stay tuned because we might be doing some experimenting down the road with some other speakers. You know how much I like to switch out the pickups on my guitars, so I get the same thrill swapping out speakers in my amplifiers. I highly recommend the Stu Mac kit. It is really fun to build. And what sets it apart, in my opinion, is the documentation. The documentation is really what's going to help you achieve a, a build that works at the end of the day or a build where you're going to run into problems. And because they're so immaculately written, the Stumac handbook guide is excellent and I could not have done it without the clear instructions. So if you're interested in building your own and you have the courage to do so, I highly recommend it. You could end up with a really, really sweet sounding point to point hand wired amplifier that you'll enjoy playing for years and years to come. So guys, I just want to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content, because I'm going to be bringing you more whether you like it or not. So you might as well subscribe. <laughs> That's it for today's video. I'm Tony. This has been Addicted to Gear. Stay tuned for more.